Good morning, Common Ground. I'm so glad each one of you to join the worship today, even, even if it's very cold out there, right? Yeah, thank you. Thank you for coming. And God is so pleasing by your worship today, I'm pretty sure. So uh, today I just want to have some like a small ceremony, the farewell. We're going to lose a uh, very, very beloved, rededicated, really committed our one of our Paris Council. So, Rezi, Eddie, could you come forward? Yes, always life is tough, right? So I have to say hello or goodbye. But I'm pretty sure we're going to meet again in the heaven. Even if we're not seeing it physically, yeah. but we never know, right? right. So once I just become uh, the senior pastor of Common Ground, they are really, really supportive. Whenever, whenever we do counseling and then the uh, Rezi, Eddie, they have really big support our common ground to build our kingdom, common ground. So they're heading to the O'Reilly. So today is the last uh, Sunday we can worship together. So we just want to express a uh, small talk about your dedication that uh, we prepare some kind of plaque. Is a common ground picture on that, and then there's some word beside, be, behind. All of us at the common ground traditional worship service, we wish to express our gratitude for your passion and unconditional commitment. We appreciate your humble and dedicated service, common ground traditional worship service. We will remember you forever. Thank you. Remember, common ground equals. Kingdom Builder. Kingdom Builder. Right? Yes, sir. I remember you emailed that, okay? <laughs> so please remember, come on ground, we will keep continue to pray for you. And this is one of our thing. We have another one. So, so like a come on ground, a really kind of fancy coin. And we have picture on inside. And back side is uh, Joshua 1 9 word. Wherever you go, be strong and be courageous. God will be with you all the time. God will speed in you. God will bless you all the time. And then... <laughs> towels, right? We have some towel. And then I prepare some like common ground the mask all the time, right? Even the states that we need it, right? Please wear the mask all the time. Okay? So thank you so much, right? And this time I want to invite uh, the parish council members to come forward. And um, in the meantime, could you say something to our common ground? Praise the Lord. I tell you, um, I have been blessed by common ground family and I made friends here. Um, she was the first one that greeted me my very first day and then my friends over there <laughs> but you all are friends um i saw you on post and um, places that we went but i tell you god is good to us we declared that we wouldn't go back to fort riley we sold our home and they're telling us that we're going back so you guys pray for us god sees ahead i i know that and there's something good in store for us, amen. amen. And I only ask that God bless you, continue to bless you. And Chaplain Lee, thank you for your leadership. Uh, that's important to the kingdom, amen. amen. Yes, give it honor to God and, and give him all the glory and honor here. And I want to thank, uh, give honor to Pastor Lee as he, as he uh, pastored us here for the last couple of months. And I want to thank the congregation for the opportunity to serve God here because I am a servant of God. That's my calling. And to help build the kingdom of God, you must be a servant of God. So I am a servant trying to help build the kingdom of God. And like Captain 
like Chaplain Lee says, wherever we go, we'll take common ground with us. This is part of our ritual, our, our inheritance that we have here on this earth. We might not see you again here on this earth, but hopefully we'll see you in glory when we all reach the pinnacle place that we're trying to get to. And I thank God for that. And I, I thank God for coming ground a ministry here at, at Camp Humphrey. God bless y'all and keep us in our, your prayers. Pause. Sister, it has been a joy and a privilege to serve God's kingdom with you while we were here, or you were here. But I got to ask, when y'all first got to Korea, did, did, you look at it? did you look at Reggie and say, Reggie, we're not in Kansas anymore? <laughs> I don't know if anybody's ever seen the movie The Wizard of Oz, but well, you're, you're, you're going home, and, and God does have have an awesome plan for you. He has a calling. Um, you may be going back to an old spot, but it's with a new calling. So let us pray, let us pray. Father, Lord, I just thank you for this season, Father, for this opportunity to witness the servant hearts of Sister Addie and, and Brother Reggie. And Father, it has encouraged me, it has strengthened my faith to serve, Lord, and to just see them show up every time there was a call. Father, it, what, what a blessing. And Father, I just ask that, that you protect them, Father, that you show them travel mercies, Father, that you give them peace during this time of transition, this PCS. Father, and when they get back to Kansas, Father, give them discernment. Because, Father, you do have a glorious plan in store for them, Father. And even though they may not see it fully yet, Father, give them the discernment to, to serve your will, Father, and to be fulfilled in that service. Father, we may not be with them physically, but, Father, we're going to be with them in spirit for eternity, Father. So thank you, Lord, and just keep them safe and bless their continued effort, Father, to build your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, I'll see you. Good morning, come ground again. I warmly welcome all of you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, because of increased COVID positive cases on base, uh, CG reinforce the core, core tenants. We have to keep every day uh, nowadays, have a mask, a social distance, okay, etc. So Please follow those rules while we are having service. If you are families, you guys can sit together. So uh, do we have any newcomers today? First time visiting our Common Ground Chapel? Anybody? We just uh, like to recognize, okay? Is there any, any other members for the last Sunday service with us today? No one? All right. So, um, you know, this cold weather reminds me of the weather at Port Durham, where I stationed before I came here. Uh, well, one Sunday morning, it was really cold, and lots of snows in the morning, and I went outside and cleared some snow, shoveling the snow to be ready for service. And there was another, the other side of the road, a big truck of snow removal, a truck was clearing the road, and he saw me, you know, shoveling, my driveway, and then he drove to me and he pushed once the snow, and he helped me huge and saved a lot of time. Two seconds of his help uh, helped 20 minutes of my work in the morning. So probably you are here as you're worshiping God, maybe heavy snow burden, 
on your shoulders and I pray God come to you and push once and help you to move a lot of burdens of heavy burdens on your shoulders through this worship. So let us come to the Lord uh, in worship. I read Philippians chapter 3 verses 13 and 14. No, dear brothers and sisters, I'm still not all I should be, but I am focusing all my energies on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I strain to reach the end of the race and receive the prize for which God, through Jesus Christ, is calling us up to heaven. Let us pray. O oh, Heavenly Father, you are Almighty God, and Savior of this world. We come before you to worship and glorify your name. O oh Lord, we lift up our voice to honor and praise you. We are not worthy to come before you because of our inequities. But by your grace and love alone, we come with boldness in your presence. May your glory shine upon us as we praise your name and offer our prayers. O oh Lord, Fill us with your spirit as we come with a hunger heart to listen and obey your words. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Please stand with me in body or in spirit as you are able this morning. We're going to be singing hymns from the light blue hymnal in front of the pew, in the pew in front of you. We're going to start with hymn number 435, God of Grace and God of Glory.
So let us continue to worship uh, through the offering. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, you are the giver of all good things, and every good and perfect gift comes from you. We ask that you accept these gifts and use them to your glory. May these gifts bring joy to the givers and comfort and hope to the soldiers and families where these gifts will be shared. We give freely and there is nothing we could give that matches your glory and majesty and the great gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let us come to the Lord with a silent prayer. As you close your eyes, as you look back this past year and try to meditate how God blessed you. What a blessing year God has poured his abundant love, joy, and hope upon you. So Let's think of this year and remember the grace, love, joy, and hope God has provided throughout this year. Let us give thanks to God. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we give all the honor and glory to you, for you are our mighty God and loving Father. You are worthy to receive our worship, for you are our Lord and Savior. We come before you with a humble heart, yearning for your grace and mercy. Father, please forgive our sins of disobedience and not following your will. May your blood of Jesus Christ cover our sins so that we can be pure and holy before you. May the Spirit of God dwell among us and move our hearts to worship and glorify your name. Lord, thank you for your protection throughout the year in the midst of natural disasters, pandemic, and personal challenges. Thank you for being our hope, joy, love, and peace in this drastic changing world. You are the only firm foundation we can trust during this time of uncertainty. O Lord, many people are helpless and hopeless, 
They find no meaning in this world. I pray your spirit of hope touches the hearts of the lost so they can see the light in this dark world, especially for those who are lonely and depressed during this holiday season. May your comforting and encouraging spirit be with them and provide them with hope, joy, and peace. We pray for the soldiers and families who are separated and going through hardship in their relationships. May your presence be with them and give them strength. Also, we pray for Camp Humphreys community who may need your intervention and support at this time. Oh Lord, I pray for your comfort and healing hands upon them, even in the midst of their hopeless situation. Oh Lord, you are the creator of the universe and all things are under your power and wisdom. Help us to trust in you and rely on your powerful hands in any circumstances. O oh Lord, we thank you giving us this time and place to worship. Open our eyes to see your glory. Open our ears to listen to your, wor your words. And open our hearts to receive you into our lives. Let the Spirit of God move us, fill us, and transform us. O oh Lord, we continue to pray as you taught us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is, it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
forgot to ask, is there children's church today? Yes, okay. Children, kindergarten to fifth grade, are excused to children's church today with our chaplain in the back. And with the congregation, please sing with me the first lesson we learn, the best lesson. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. reading from Deuteronomy chapter 30, Moses' words to the congregation, verses 8 through 10. Moses writes, you will again obey the Lord and obey all his commands I am giving you today. Then the Lord your God will make you most prosperous in all the work of your hands and in all the fruit of your womb, the young of your livestock and the crops of your land. The Lord will again delight in you and make you most prosperous, just as he delighted in your ancestors, if you obey the Lord your God, and keep his commands and decrees that are written in the book of the law, and turn to the Lord with all your heart and with all your soul. The word of the Lord. Thank you. Please be seated. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Post Merry Christmas. Post Merry Christmas. Okay, say Post Merry Christmas you know, to the right, to the left, to the front, and Happy New Year too. You're right. Post Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Okay, wave your hands. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, even if you know it's really cold outside, but you know inside over here, you know the warmth of Jesus Christ is upon us. Amen. Amen. Okay. The title of you know, today's sermon is Once Again. Please repeat after me. Once again. Yeah. Yeah, today's text, chapter 30, is the conclusion of the entire Deuteronomy. Verses 1 through 10 emphasize that even if Israel is cursed, for serious sins and becomes a prisoner, prisoner of other countries. God will restore Israel's old status again and pour all the blessings recorded in the law if Israelites sincerely repent and return to the Lord. This is a background knowledge of you know, today's Bible verses. Deuteronomy chapter 30. It's a great blessing for a person to have the words again. We doubt that it would be a punishment and a misfortune for humankind. Humans, we humans are good at making mistakes because they are lacking. So the word again gives them a chance to recover from those mistakes. Yeah, I and you, we are making mistakes. Right? The Bible says the word again 729 times. Wow, that's a lot. Right? It is used quite often compared to other words. Of course. Not all of those usages are the same. However, in many 
cases, it is used to forgive, to give another chance. The Bible is the book of again. The Bible is the book of God's grace, which means again. Thus, to say, do it again to the wrong acted person is to give him a chance to be forgiven and recover. God told the two people at the Garden of Eden that eating the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil would kill them. But God gave them a chance to hit the snake's head again without ending their history. Noah's era was judged by a flood, but God allowed Noah's family to make a new history again. Since human history has been connected in this way, it is the history of God's grace. God gave this law of grace in nature. What is it? The four seasons. Spring, summer, fall, and winter. After Noah's flood judgment, God told them this. Genesis chapter 8, verse 20 through 22. Listen. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord, and taking some of all the clean animals and clean birds, he sacrificed burnt offerings on it. The Lord smelled a pleasing aroma and said in his heart, Never again will I curse the ground because of humans, even though every inclination of the human heart is evil from childhood. And never again will I destroy all living creatures I have done. As long as the earth endures, Seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night, we never cease. Through the changes of the four seasons, God trained the people to start over. And through that opportunity, wise and sincere people gain the richness of a better life. In addition to the four seasons, people gain the wisdom of life to restart the day, month, and years. Of course, a gain cannot be done without the previous action, but you get a new chance to recover. Everybody remember, today is the last Sunday of 2021. Are we supposed to celebrate or are we supposed to be nervous? But I want to say this, but the new year is approaching us again. It is not the end. There is another opportunity to do it among the many things that all things have brushed. So today, I will tell you three points under the title once again. Number one point is, again is an opportunity to shake off the things you've done wrong in the past. You may have seen animals shaking off their bodies after crossing the river. If they don't shake it off, it's too heavy to move well because of the water in their bodies. After shaking, shaking off the water, the animals proceed on their way again. Likewise, to start over, we have to shake off things that are not necessary or wrong in the past. For example, everybody experienced it, this thing. You know, since you know, we are in the military, we move, we keep moving every two to three years, right? You know, I'm jealous of uh, like, the, you know, GS employees and uh, contractors, you know, we have to move. Yeah, so, yeah, you know, a lot of trash comes out when a family moves out. 
Is, is that right? Woo! Yeah, when I was young, you know, when it moved, you know, I tried to find coin under the, you know, B kind of stuff, right? You know, then, wow, I hit the jackpot. You know, that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, actually, the family, they don't realize how much unnecessary stuff they have until the day they move out. Sometimes they find things they don't need, but may not throw away the stuff with traces of affection. But it's not a good idea to keep things we don't need. Is that right? Yeah. Now is the time to shake our bodies to find and shake off unnecessary things. In the expression of Apostle Paul, he said, Philippians chapter 3, verse 13, just like this, forgetting what's behind. Forgetting what's behind. Although, of course, it's not easy to forcibly erase memories because the memories still remain here, right? But they should not dominate over you. To do so, God's help is needed, which is faith. He said this through prophet Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18 says, Come now, let us settle the matter, say the Lord. Through, though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. Amen for that? Amen. We can solve our problems like this. And then we can see other people as brothers and sisters in the Lord and hope that they will change as well. This is Paul's writing that we know well. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 16 through 17. So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old has gone, the new is here. Hallelujah! Amen, amen. The old is gone and new is here in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. My brothers and sisters, rely on these words and actively solve your problem. That way, we can start over. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Second point is, again, is an opportunity to recover from the beginning. Today's text strongly implies this. In Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 8 says, You will again obey the Lord. Israel had a covenant with the Lord at the time of Exodus. If you look at Exodus chapter 19, it looks like this. Exodus chapter 19, verse 5 through 8. Now, if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, then out of all nations you will be my treasured possession. Although the whole earth is mine, you will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words you are to speak to the Israelites. So Moses went back and summoned the elders of the people and set before them all the words the Lord had commanded him to speak. The people all responded together, we will do everything the Lord has said. Israel's promise to God was to listen and keep his words. And God was a blessing covenant to make Israel a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. So the text was about the covenant. 
the people need to remember the covenant and go back to the beginning. Again, is the gospel of recovery. Let's not just welcome the new year, but prepare it for the day of recovery. If you recover from the beginning, you will spiritually win in the next year. This promise is covered in every detail in the text. Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 9, today's text says, Then the Lord your God will make you most prosperous in all the work of your hands and in the fruit of your womb, the young of your lively stock, livestock, and the crops of your land. The Lord will again delight in you and make you prosperous, just as he delighted in your ancestors. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He will again delight in you. Our way to live is to recover from the beginning. The New Year's vision is not a new plan, but an initial recovery from the beginning. So let's do it again with faith. Let's go back to the beginning of the covenant with the Lord. I hope and pray that your first love with the Lord will recover. And that your faith life will recover. Let's restore the revival full of spiritual vitality. That's my second point. My last one. Again, is about renewing the attitude of life. This is what the text says. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 10. With all your heart, with all your soul. As everyone knows, it's an attitude that changes over time. Even if you go the way you go and do what you want, something will always change. Your passion can get cold. The direction and content are the same, but it becomes useless when the passion cools down. It means that there is no fruit. Even if we go back to the beginning, we don't get anything without passion in Jesus Christ. God wants it from us. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4 through 5 says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. What successful people have in common is passion. People who have a lot of passion with little capability tend to succeed in working more than those who have a lot of ability with little passion. Do you agree with it? Yeah. Passion is a very important element of our faith life too. The characteristic of faith is also passion. In the new year, I want to say to the congregation, let's pray fervently. Let's also participate in worship service with great motivation. Let's do our ministry with passion. Passion is not the heat of the moment, but rather based on unwavering sincerity. Amen? Amen. How was your Christmas? How did, how did you spend your Christmas? Probably spend some time with your loved ones, family members, you know, as for chaplains and, you know, commanders, you'll probably spend some time with your soldiers. 
You know, I want to show how I spent Christmas with our soldiers. Okay. Okay, yeah, so uh, this is a group photo, yeah, funny photo, yeah, so after that thing, you know, all the UMTs and soldiers, you know, family members come together under the permission of my brigade commander. Yeah, COVID-19 is going on, you know, I got a permission from my commander. Okay, this is, you know, what happened one day before Christmas Eve. Okay, so last one whole week was really busy, Woo, you know, Monday through Wednesday. I was at Dragon Hill Lodge with 70 family members. Yeah, think about that. You know, 20 couples with 30 kids. Woo! And then, you know, our chaplains do strong bonds event. Three days. And then on the second day, we went up to a latte tower. You know, top of the tower, and then we see uh, beautiful things and you know, some, you know, foggy stuff, you know, because of the air pollution and everything. But still, you know, we had a really good time. Amen. Yeah, so I'm full of energy all the time. Is that right? Yeah, you know, you see that. And the next day, you know, 23rd, we did it, you know, in our, you know, soldiers' barracks. You know, probably the song you just heard is the, I think, you know, 25th time, you know, we did it. You know, every floor, you know, with our soldiers, so we did it. You know, think about that. I'm getting old. I, I'm sorry. Yeah, you know, we have a lot of, you know, yeah, senior people. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. But I'm over 50. You know, 51 year old. I'm heading towards 52 next year. So, you know, I'm different from 40s, right? You know, when, when I joined the military 38, I'm different. Yeah, I'm totally different from me back then, right? So, you know, yeah, next day, you know, we did it for two hours. Yeah, so in the soldiers' barracks, you know, playing guitar, you know, playing tambourine with a karaoke ma microphone, right? You know, with, a, you know, like a Santa Claus, hats and everything. We had a really good time. And then on the next day, I was supposed to be here for Christmas Eve service, but something happened, K-16 Songnam. So... I was there, you know, with a Chaplain Lee, one of my battalion chaplains, to conduct a you know, Christmas Eve service AK-16. So, you know, on the day, you know, we led a service. After that, you know, we moved around the soldiers' barracks out there with the same costume, with the same tambourine, with the same karaoke mic. I did it. Think about that. All full week. Ooh, I was tired. But I was really happy. Because I have a passion in Jesus Christ. Amen. Pray the Lord. Pray the Lord. On the way to K-16, you're probably, you know, my body knows how tired I am. So I sighed a couple of times without, you know, my consciousness. You know, my wife, you know, misunder, mis misinterpreted that, hey, you know, you don't like to do it? So, you know, she asked me, hey, hey, honey, did you do that to impress, you know, someone higher? So, I thought to myself for three to five seconds, really? Did I do that to impress somebody? 
No, I did it for the glory of God. Everybody, you see my face. You see my voice. I'm really happy to be with my soldiers in times of Christmas and in times of closing 2021. Because of COVID-19 cases, soldiers, especially single soldiers, far away from home, they spend time over here. I really wanted to be with them for my presence of ministry. Hey guys, I want to close my sermon. Okay, one more time, friendly reminder for everybody. Today is the last Sunday of 2021. Remember the three points of my sermon. Number one, again, it's an opportunity to shake off things you've done wrong in the past. Second, again, is an opportunity to recover from the beginning. Number three, again, is about renewing the attitude of life. I hope it will be a time to strengthen your determination to do it once again in the name of Jesus Christ. No matter how desperate you are, it's not impossible for a person who is able to stand up again. God will help you to close 2021 with the grace of a game. And opening the new chapter of 2022 with passion in Jesus Christ. Amen? Let us pray. Our great and gracious Father, as we come to the close of the year 2021, we thank you that you have been with us through the days of this past year. Perhaps many a day we have not felt you near. Perhaps at times we, we have even felt that you have forsaken us and forgotten us. But we thank you that it's never been so. We pray that you will go with us into this new year of 2022, remembering the grace of once again. There is none of us who knows what the new year will hold. But we thank you that every moment of that year is in your hands. And you will be with your people. Grant to us as the days of the new year unfold an ever closer walk with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please stand with me for our final hymn, hymn number 571, Trust and Obey.
Please receive the benediction. Trust and obey. Trust and obey. God, let us trust and obey more and more in the days to come, 2022, 2023, all the ways in our lives. God, let us stand up once again you know, for your kingdom, you know, for your love and peace, we need to spread that gospel in the world. God be with us. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen.